10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good golly, Miss Molly. Welcome to the channel, and welcome to the latest edition of the Canon Film Club, where we talk about all things Canon films. Uh, and today, we're doing a, a, something that we've talked about before on a certain other person's channel, who we're going to talk about in a second or two. But today, we're doing one of my favourite Christmas movies. Cobra. I'm not sure I can hear Nick. I think he's I think he's muted. Hang on. There yeah, you go. he is. Uh, no, I knew that on purpose. Well, you <laughs> but one yeah. Of my, one of my favorite Christmas movies, Cobra. And also, we're cheating a little bit today because Cobra is kind of on the edge. Is it really canon? Isn't it canon? Yes, it's produced by Golan and Globus as a vanity production credit, but they had no part in the actual canon studios and no part in the actual production or very little because they had to do this deal with Warner Brothers. But anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. The Canon logo doesn't appear in it, but I don't care because it's Canon, it's Canon adjacent. It's close enough. It's on the show. So welcome to this extravaganza on the wonderful, wonderful peak 80s action movie, uh, Cobra. And of course, in, in honor of our, our uh, special guest today, I'm going to have to play a certain clip. You have the biggest dick I've ever seen on a man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, give him the big head like that, bro. Come so on, man. it is my esteemed pleasure to welcome to onto the show today the man, the creator and host of Toxic Tuesday, one of the greatest shows on YouTube that I'm so pleased I'm a part of, Mr. Nick Visor of 32 Flavors of Nick Visor. How are you, sir? Good man, I'm happy to really happy to be here. I mean, it was just like, oh no, I gotta watch Cobra again, again. What, 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 
a hard man decision. what an obstacle like this is this is a tough decision when i heard about this i was just like i have to do this so uh thanks for inviting me thanks for having me here and hello to our ever so excellent chat yeah um i got this sweet shirt for christmas where he cuts a slice of pizza with the scissors and oh, I, nice. dude, yeah nice. well it's funny you should mention that clip So the infamous, <laughs> infamous, just for you, Nick, the infamous pizza cutting with scissors clip. And do you know, what does everybody notice about that pizza? He cuts it with a pair of scissors. Apart from that. Oh, man. Um, it doesn't have pineapple. That's right. There is no pineapple yep. anywhere <laughs> contaminant. Because uh, I, I Canadian bacon and, and pineapple is perfectly you know, legit. Many moons back, I stopped and look. I'm like, hold up. He's in California. Where are the toppings on that pizza? Because this movie is in California, and it is. Oh, that, it's sure. pepperoni. I, yeah, I, straight up pepperoni. I didn't play the original clip because it's got the Miami sound machine in it, and I'm going to get copyright struck to hell today. Anyway, yeah, you are. Oh, yeah. There you are. You uh, but it's funny. It's Miami sound machine, peak '80s, and yet it's in LA. Dude. So yeah, you know, they should have yeah. filmed it in Miami. Coast to coast, baby. They should coast have. This would have do if, this in a Florida setting. I mean, Cobra is basically, he's like, a, he's like, a, he's basically the Sylvester Stone version of a Florida man. It would have been perfect. Absolutely. You could have gone out and punched a few alligators. Like yeah. That. Oh, dude. That would have been huge. So uh, I'd like to welcome everybody else on the panel of the show. First of all, Pope Metallicus, how are you, sir? Doing good, man. Doing good. Like Nick said, it was a huge uh, chore and trial having to watch this movie again. But, you know, we got through it. We're here to talk about it, yeah. and we'll uh, we'll have some fun doing it. I've watched it about four times this week prepping for this show. So. Right. Uh, it's good to have you here, buddy. Uh, also, our great friend and regular Imperatus. How are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good, actually. Yeah, that's very upbeat for you. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, happened, this movie's great. It's a, it's a lot of firsts in one movie. Yeah, it is. First what's first first lost your virginity during it or well no I was gonna say I think this is the first if not only eighties action movie where the enemy isn't the Russian there's some rogue military group That's or a true. gang or dealing with a cult slash serial killer. I'm pretty yes. sure it's the first if not the only one that ever really did that. Well somebody the other day said Stallone had fought all these different people like the Russians and blah blah blah, but he'd never fought the Nazis. Well that strictly speaking, this is a kind of a Nazi ish group. Yeah. Yeah, eugenicist type. Yeah. yeah, although there, there's got the weirdest idea about creating a new si society, which appears to be brutally kill everybody else. So, like, you know, <laughs> that's the way you're creating a new society. Okay. Uh, welcome to our great friend Joe from Joe's Atmosphere. How are you, sir? I am doing fantastic, brother. Yeah, good. just got done enjoying my first Saturday and Sunday where I didn't have to work. I didn't have to take a day off to be off work i actually have weekends off now i'm just wow. so wow fantastic it only took dude 58 years to get to this point it's, it's so great yeah, that's nice. fantastic man congratulations thank you sir thank you 50 my boss years. actually heard what i told her a year and a half ago and we got the guy trained in about a month and he did his first saturday so at, at the house this 58 weekend, so. years so that was when you started working age 20 i started working so you're out the womb bro out so the womb i was working so you're 78 you know <laughs> that's, that's it living the dream man yeah i know what you mean what? it's it's nice but well, it's been 40 centigrade below here for the last couple of weeks i did not have to get up and go to work mm -hmm. great yeah uh we do have a final guest well i say final more people may pop in later and it's a new person to the channel somebody who i streamed with for the first time on saturday night on bourbon and boarding it's uh little chad or lil chad how are you sir hello 
Um, this first time using Streamlabs, so hopefully I'm not going to screw things up. Well, you sound marvelous. So Ooh, excellent. Welcome to the show. I know you expressed a big interest in Canon. And that I movie. love me some Canon films. In fact, I think one time on my show, Brahma mentioned that, like, you should talk to 70s rock fan because <laughs> I had just started going off on a tangent on Canon for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you go off on a tangent? No. Oh, yeah. Uh, Imp knows. Uh, don't wait. Tomorrow I'll get you. <laughs> oh, sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Well, it's great to have you here, buddy. Uh, looking forward to chatting to, about this great movie. Uh, but I'll also would like to pause to say hello to everybody that's out there in the chat on YouTube and, and Rumble. Uh, obviously, we'll do our best to keep up with these as we go. So we have uh, Jonah Hex is with us. Our great mod, the great D-Bud Martin. Thank you for being here. And for everything you do, sir, the check is in the mail. Um as the actress said to the bishop. Um, Keto Sim, Dustin, get your ass on here. What are you doing out there? You, buddy. Uh, Captain, have fun. Nice to see you. Uh, we have Vince Womack. Vince, the Gilded King. Vince Womack. Yeah, no kidding. Well, I, he really is. The, I love, I, we have mm -hmm. such a great Gilded like scene within our sphere. And Vince, uh, he is the Gilded King. Yeah. Uh, Jonah Hicks is here. Good to see you. Uh, the Wicked Fanboy. Uh, good to see you, sir. Uh, Joe's Atmosphere is also in the chat, which is great. So he's a sick, he's a, he's a schizophrenic. Dude, I started in the chat. I will die in the chat. Don't worry about that. Die in the chat. Uh, e. Clay Thompson. Both. Welcome to you, David Glenn. I'm gonna. If I miss anybody, we will try and catch you later. Uh, uh, Davina, of course, the wonderful Davina, also a mod and uh, also our fact, our fact person. She fact checks, fact, 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 fact checks. This, 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 this. And uh, if I'm missing anybody, Christian, she of may course. be the biggest, uh, the fastest Googler on the planet. Indeed. She may be. Uh, that's right. She, he, she, or they may be. Who right. Knows? Yeah. The, we the, don't want to assume the, anything the, here. Uh, folks. The wonderful, <laughs> yeah. The wonderful Christian oh, is no! also here. But as I say, if we forget <laughs> anybody, if we, if we, we will catch up with you later. Now, this stream is not monetized. In fact, I don't monetize any of my live streams anymore because of the interruptions of the adverts. This one wouldn't stand a chance of being monetized because of the subject matter. No. And all okay, the then. Bleep, 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 all bleep. the copyright stuff that will happen over in Rumble, I can leave. At the end of the show, the Rumble one will be the final record of the show because the YouTube one might get butchered if it gets blocked. So, right. Uh, but yeah, feel free to, obviously, if you're watching for the first time, like, subscribe, all that great stuff. Thank you very much. Click that thumbs up, share out the stream. And in, even if you they consider supporting the channel through Super Chats or Streamlabs, just a thought of not, not monetizing these. So uh, anything in a little bit helps. But enough of that. Let's get on to the movie. I'm ready. I'm so ready. Are we for ready? This. <laughs> yes. I'm ready too. I've been ready. I've been born ready. I was like Jonah Hex. I was born ready in the womb for this movie. <laughs> well, actually, I was already 20 plus years old when it came out. Um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about uh, if I can get some images on the screen. First of Do all, it. obviously, 1986. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it could have been. This is the movie that, that could have been. Could have yeah. been. Could have been Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> Axel Cobretti. <laughs> Axel Cobretti. <laughs> you like that would have been all wrong for sure. But, uh, oh, yeah. Um, Axel Cabretti for sure that would have been fun. Uh, the it's it's um, well, I mean, I if Tom was here, he would know all the details, but Stallone signed the deal for Over the Top with Canon Films to make Over the Top. He was offered 12.5 million, he said yes. Um, and it was an exclusive deal, but in the time it took Canon to raise the cash, um, to, to do. Um, to do to do boot. over the to do it over the top. Something else happened, which is Warner Brothers said we want to make this movie Cobra with Stallone. Now, before all that, St Stallone had signed up to do Beverly Hills Cop back in the day. Yes, he, he did wrote, this, wrote a screenplay and everything, and the studio Paramount took a look at it and said, "Yeah, that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for we're not looking for a hard action 
type thing. We're looking for something that's a bit more comedic. So the two could never agree in that they parted ways. But Stallone obviously kept that script, that screenplay that he had, which was a loose adaptation of a novel called Fair Game, or also called A Running Duck by somebody called Paula Gosling. Mm -hmm. So um, so he took that away, and it was it was meant to be Axel Cabretti. <laughs> And they kept all the action stuff in it. And then meanwhile, does the deal with Canon. Canon and uh, Canon being Canon. They, uh, they said, well, we'll pay you 12.5 million for over the top, but we've only got like a million now. We'll give you that now. And now we've got to go raise the rest of the cash, which they went off like they do Canon and did all these deals and product placement, blah, blah, blah. Along come Warner Brothers, they said, we want Stallone to make this movie Cobra. Could you please release him from this exclusive deal to do that? We'll give Man Golan and Globus a producer credit and say it's a canon film, even though the canon logo will not be on it. Hence, Cobra. So Dude. that's a rough awesome. story. I love the posters. All the posters for this movie are absolutely kick-ass. So things I definitely want to... posters, period, are awesome. Oh, dude, right? The, the 80s one. movies posters were really killer. Like, both, like I love both of them. I've, like, when I move into a house, I want to have both of these. I want to have them this. both. Isn't that brilliant? But the previous It's iconic. One, yeah. mm -hmm. It's iconic. I love this. This is a good runner-up. Yeah, it's even got the, the best... Bridget Nielsen in the uh, right, <laughs> but the problem with this is it's got the motorcycle. It should have the car. It should it should have the car. That's what you remember about this movie is the damn car. I like the Japanese stuff as Even, well. Well, yep. I think because a lot of people affiliate the opening credits with the motorcycle. I think it was about that. But yeah, it should have been the car. You are right. It should have been mm -hmm. the car. But they, I think they're who in the arts to make it. They're probably oh, but look at the opening credits and he's like, oh, okay, well, do, 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 do. and mm -hmm. then voila. The best poster is the one with the line like "Crime is the disease." And yeah, that's, that is. Yeah. That, that's I what like makes that one the best too. That's the poster because the line, just like if I think it's you know, it's but, just so perfect for how cheesy this yeah. is. Like, right, the line and, and the laser coming out of the top of the oh god, the giant too, because is, every laser weapon sights. had a laser on it. The funny thing it is, out. I was looking at. I think that's not a laser; that's a cigarette lighter. <laughs> so, it's like a flame coming out. so the first time I remember seeing one of those, I think in the first Terminator, if you yeah. remember the, you know, there was one of the guns that uh, Arnold took. It was like a revolver. It was a 45. <laughs> it was a 45 caliber and uh, it had a laser mounted on the top of it. And he blew the first Sarah Connor away through the door with it. Yeah. yeah. And That's then, a good um, one. Yeah. And I think in Tango and Cash, Kurt Russell's had the big laser sight on it too. Mm -hmm. I remember. So, yeah. Just to interrupt uh, briefly, guys, thank you to Kitty Bear for the 99 cent. Um, uh, what do you call those things? Stickers. <laughs> the, the, Sticker. the pile of poop with a face, um, <laughs> which is probably a co fair commentary on my presentation skills today. In that case, we got to play uh, some kind of uh, clip. You're a disease, and I'm the cure. <laughs> So, uh, we'll be playing a little more of that later, I suspect. This is another great Japanese uh, poster. Yeah, I was trying to remember what he had in his mouth. I couldn't remember if it was a toothpick or a matchstick. I'm thinking, yeah. is he ever going to smoke that bloody thing? Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one, too. Cobra, bad for your health. Clean up your act. This is at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he has, uh, I like how, like, especially how it encapsulates the, the Cobra logo that's on his blade and also has his license plate. Because when he pulls out yep. the vehicle, it zooms down on his license plate. It says, awesome, 50. I awesome 50. remember, die. I showed this to one of my uh, buddies in, in the Mel in Chicago. I'm like, you've never seen Cobra? He's like, no. I'm like, oh, we're going to watch this. And as soon as he saw that car pull up, he saw the license plate. He said, awesome. I thought he was going to have a heart attack. He said, what the <laughs> hell is this? Right. And he knew he was in for a memorable movie. Now he, oh, yeah. he quotes this movie all the time, which is the best thing. He, was, he, he became should. converted. So uh, just just to, to talk about Vince's point, yes, little known facts, Stallone was Robert Smith in The Cure. <laughs> 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 Uh, welcome uh, to um, to various others like RJ Godzilla and Vit Lady V and Lord Thoth of all giant. Good to see you all. Um, so what else have we got here? Oh yeah, look at this. Yes, action figures. What's up? Yes, yes. Oh, complete with bullet hole packaging. Yes, yeah. isn't that cute? 
That's Dude, awesome. we're just I want showing a few of these to get in the swing of it before we show some clips from the movie. Oh, uh, Marion Cabretti, and this is the new one though that's coming out. That Stallone's got oh, a video. I toys is this... doing one. Oh my god! Uh, I mean, well, what company is this? Because it says Sly Stallone shop at the bottom. So is well, it Hot have... Toys or is it someone else? Uh, Stallone works with his own people because he did this. He did ones for Rambo too. Oh, oh yeah, you're it's, right. It's not cheap, but it looks magnificent. He has, oh, a, he has an unboxing of it on his site. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, I got to check that out because yeah. I, 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 I spent a few hundred for this. I mean, I am due for new toys, and this would be <laughs> this would be one to have. Seriously, you've, this would be one to sir, really make saying, happen. You're saying you've worn the existing toys out? Yes, I have worn them <laughs> out, and I need a new Cobra to play with. Mm. So, yeah, so Cobra 86, made by Warner Brothers, cost, uh, budget was about uh, 25 million, and it grossed 160 million, God knows yeah. how many VHS sales. I mean, it was a hit, no doubt. Yeah, big hit, <laughs> up against Star Trek 4 and Poltergeist 2 at the time. Uh, yeah. So Does anybody even remember Poltergeist 2? I mean, uh, yes, we all remember. Yeah, Star Trek Ultra Guys 2 was super like the old dude was super creepy, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. don't <laughs> when he walked and knocked on the door, hello, child. <laughs> Come on, Ultra <laughs> Guys 2 is, uh, and then, yeah, so don't sleep on Ultra Guys 2. Man. <laughs> so, so I was saying it's, it's not got a canon logo on it, it does feel like a classic canon movie oh you know it does man looks like it feels like it so we're counting it's canon all the way r rated but they had to cut a significant amount of stuff out otherwise it would have got an x rating so they cut an awful lot of killings out of it like close-up killings and blood and torture stuff and uh, in order to get it just to an r <laughs> you know like, so just uh, enough now was he? Well, I mean, he did lower the population of California. Or, or, by a few is this where he met her? Oh yeah. Uh, no, uh, Rocky Four. Rocky that what it was. So the the uh, the killings. Yeah, there was fifty two killings, forty one of them by Cobra himself. <laughs> As it should be. I mean, they could always. It should have been. To be fair, they could have improved the movie by a point five percent by making it one hundred percent. On, on on the cobra but we'll we'll forgive that they he didn't you know he cool. missed that five seven percent of them i actually think he should have killed 42 because it would have been the answer to life the universe and everything right That's there true. does anyone else think that there's a fun head cannon thing where you're like hey judge dread he was a genetically engineered street judge maybe cobra's <laughs> dna was what they used to make him <laughs> It's you not on the realm of possibility as far as the Stallone drive. We'll have to specify yeah. on the Stallone Although in the timeline, it's more likely to be John Spartan. I've always, I've um, always had my weird, um, I've been, especially more recently, that I wonder if this movie exists in the same universe as G.I. Joe's. Just so we have the co the confrontation between the Cobra and Cobra Commander. Right. As d says, there is only, disappointingly, only one killing by Meat Hook, though. Yep. I mean, they could have Come on, guys, put some effort in. Right. And we'll talk about that later as we're going through the stills because there's a lot of stuff to talk about now, uh, in the action scenes and, uh, and so on. But they, so Sly, obviously the key man, and as we say, Cannon had this deal with Sly to make over the top. It was going yeah. to be a few years to raise the money, even the money to pay him that they promised him. So they let him out of this deal to make this Cobra, which he had the script for, which would have been Beverly Hills Cop. So it's Marion, Lieutenant Marion, Marion, Cobra Cobretti. And Stallone, of course, needs little to no introduction to anybody. Nope. Born in so, Hell. Mrs. Kitchen. Cobretti, why did you give your son a girl's name? <laughs> because I knew he'd kill everybody. Right? <laughs> it's like the Johnny Cash song. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, Bush is an interesting point because this is, all these films are in the same universe. Rocky, Tango and Cash, Cobra, and the porn one. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the original uh, Italian Stallion? Yeah, uh, because it was called oh, something different. With it. They rebranded it Italian Stallion later. But, uh, Beverly Hills Cobra. So Stallone, by this time, enormous star. Uh, get, Cannon getting him to do over the top was a huge deal for them. It c crippled them financially. 
for years. Uh, probably was the, one of the final nails in the coffin, which was running out of holes for nails at that point. Right. Um, but hey, who was gonna, he wasn't going to turn that down because Over the Top was a project he wanted to make too because it was slightly different. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that family thing in it. But, uh, born in Hell's Kitchen, 1946. So yeah, I mean, Stallone, if you watch that Sly, have you guys seen that Sly documentary on Netflix? I think it's Netflix. No. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, Adam from Ed's Talking recommended it to me before we did our show for Rambo 2. And he's like, oh, check this out. And then I watch it. I'm like, holy damn, this is kick ass. And yeah, Debbie gave me some more insight to Stone. I never knew. And it was fun to see, especially for him in the A's, uh, him and Arnie were basically compared to see who got the most outrageous action scene, the biggest guns, the biggest knives. The you know the coolest one liners and it got heated. This is that point too where that where that competition was definitely um, heating up per se. Yeah, he. I tell you, you know, a lot of people think of Sly as just a meathead, but that is one immensely talented dude. I mean, yep. he is. That's an he has several artistic venues that he works in. It's, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. That, that guy is too. It's a, it on, a good documentary. You yes. hit on something mm -hmm. great there because that's another thing in the documentary that highlight how much of a lot of his roles he's had directing credits, writing credits, producing credits, sometimes even all of the above. Mm -hmm. He actually has that thing that Arnold doesn't have. Arnold is strictly a performer, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But Sloan is an actor, actor far more than he is. Oh, he's a nice. writer, director, producer. He can do it all. Dude, he wrote Rocky. I mean, yeah. you know, oh, and it ended up winning Best Picture. You know, and I to mean, think yeah. th plenty of people walked out at the very first screening of that. Like you wouldn't mm -hmm. believe that now, but yeah, that that happened. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the car. Yes, yeah, awesome. Any, any, pe <laughs> any petrol heads here? Yeah. So oh, the yeah. I believe I'm not a big car guy 1950 mercury monterey is that mm -hmm. right wow man the awesome very, 50 very plate wow. a lead sled as they call it you can see this way folks if this car collided with anything made after 198 i'd say 1990 it would probably not get a scratch on it and destroy whatever it hit that yeah. this thing is a lead sled the definition of it that's it right yeah, and heavily modified in the movie mm -hmm. and, and i think Stallone actually owned this. This was his car. Wow. Obviously, they made doubles for it to destroy in the film, mm -hmm. but he did own the car. Uh, and there's lots of articles up about where they all went and and who's got them and, and so on. But, uh, what a what a it's a tank. It's a tank. Yeah, it is that uh, what tank with a fast motor in it. Yep. Oh god, it's some. It, and we're going to show some clips of it later in action. But what a beautiful, beautiful vehicle. Yeah. Uh, it's Ooh, something it like looks that. like yeah, Darth Vader. Yeah, That's what it looks yeah. like. It screams Darth Vader. It, it does. does. It I'm does. coming to kill you. That's yeah. what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know where this is on display, but I'd love to see it in person. I know, right? Definitely not in California. It looks way too nice right now. We're in 2024. I mean, look at the grill. It looks like it's clenching its teeth to run you over. It does. It does. <laughs> It looks, well, it, it looks like it looks like it's got it's got like the motorhead teeth with some braces, so it just bites metal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's got the snaggle teeth going. And it, it, it did cause um, one of the. It could do things like this. What's your problem, my sassy? You touched my car, man. Get him, Mando. What are they? Get him. 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 I'll have to stop it there because we're getting the well, warnings. <laughs> 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 ever that 
in order to get his car out of the way, he just pushes his car out of the way using his own car. And the funny thing is, uh, after that, because he rips the guy's shirt, and then yeah. after that, he walks away, and the guy kicks his car. And makes it makes no difference to the car. No. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> None. Not was, one bit at <laughs> all. It is hilarious. Especially then, and it's funny because you you wouldn't think a scene like that would be a set of payoff scene, but it is because there is even a payoff to that. Mm-hmm. And then he goes up and eats the pe- cuts the pizza. Up. Oh, <laughs> the legendary kind of pizza with the scissors. <laughs> mm-hmm. so we, we we can't really. T- we, we also have to talk about some of the weapons. Now, again, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but first of all. And there's a lot of weapons in this movie. But, mm. uh, there's this the Jata, Jatamatic SMG that he okay. uses with the laser sight. You see him putting it together. And it's just lovely when you see all that getting put together. Um, it's a Finnish weapon, I believe. Um, I think it's the Finnish version of the VZ Scorpion. Okay, yeah. So you, you even know more about it than me, mate. But it's, it's a big feature in the movie. Yeah, it's a nice gun, too. Yeah. Nice looking gun. And I may have pronounced it wrong. I think it's Jatimatic. Nine millimeter submachine gun. Nine millimeter. Nine millimeter. So that's one of his iconic weapons from this. Uh, you see him there. And I always thought it, was, it looks like a cigarette. Are you sharing weapon. that, buddy? Because we can't see it. Oh, sorry. Bigger pardon. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Look that's for that spraying weapon. bullets right there. Yeah. That's, that's one of them bullet sprayers right there. Not accurate, but it'll. Put like down a lot of bullets down, and like all good eighties action films, never runs out of ammunition. No, no, ever. Of course not, <laughs> dude. Well, fuck realism. <laughs> why? Why do that? We could just have him always be loaded and shoot the shit out bad. Oh, yeah. They're bad guys, is... so the gun has to work like magic. Yeah, and there is in the movie. Oh, oh so I'm getting more warnings. I'm not showing any video now. So. Uh, there he is. Um, with the right. He has the right look to use that weapon, I think. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Look Absolutely. <laughs> yep. but, but there's another iconic weapon, which is, I mean, look at that grip. Where it's got the Cobra on it once again. Uh, a yeah. lot of the... <laughs> 1911. Gotta love it. Cold, gold <laughs> Cup World National Wars. Match 1911. That's a 45, isn't it? Uh, well, it's a 45 yeah, originally, but he it's a 9 millimeter conversion. That he uses in the movie, apparently. Aviator glasses. Why would you do that? Yeah, that's my question. (laughs) Black shirt, uh, Cobra logo on the gun, license plate that says Awesome 50. (laughs) (laughs) It's called the Cobra. Everything about this is just like it that is just the most shameless 80s ridiculous as ever. That is (laughs) definitely well, for lack of a better um term, it's very over the top. It knows it is and it embraces it. I mean if you're, if you see, it's, this was made right in the middle of the 80s, filmed in 80s. Yeah, the prime. It's, it's, it's a peak. You can feel it oozing off the street. I can feel just the 80s, 80s melting all over this movie. And, I, and I'm, I'm for it, man. I'm yeah. all for it. The, the new- you, know, you can tell my opinion on that gun because I totally don't have one almost identical to it sitting right behind me. Right? Yeah. Of course you don't. Yeah. <laughs> course you don't. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's peak. It's got peak action, 80s action, peak 80s music, peak 80s one liners. Peak 80s, kick ass. Everything about it is peak. Peak 80s. But that's uh, so a couple of I mean, there's other weapons. We might show one or two later. But the, of course, the, the rest of the cast, are, we'll talk about all the cast when we show the stills. But um, well, there's, a, there's a, him using that weapon, of course. But, uh, um, and there's another shot of it with that beautiful grip. The only thing that that worries me, right? And we'll see it in the movie is he keeps shoving it down the front of his pants. Now, yeah, confident as I am with a weapon, I wouldn't be putting a second loaded weapon down there. No, 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 no. no, no, no One no, is no. enough. You put that back here. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Oops, <laughs> bang. <laughs> oh, shit. That's yeah. one of the things I've always kind of been leery about with, like, um, you know, the modern, like, forward carry. Like, that's, like, the standard. Oh, yeah. The, the, concealed. The, uh, it's, like, it's down the front. The abdomen carry. No, yeah, nope, yeah, nope, 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 nope. I was just like, I would have to get used to sitting there with a loaded weapon. Sitting there with a loaded weapon. Never would I carry it there. Day. The hips or the I back. Just, that's, it just makes me shudder every time I see it. Yeah. Like, mm. Like, My favorite actually is the shoulder. That I've got a shoulder yeah. holder. I mean, right look, here. if you're if you're gonna have um especially I know that um there's been there were a lot of stories, a lot of people's got the um P320 as a carry pistol, and it started mm-hmm. having a lot of issues with 
uh, accidental discharges because yeah. the striker would go off just while it was holstered. I would rather have that position where it would graze my butt than the other side. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I, I, I get enough accidental discharges without shoving another loaded weapon down there. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. So moving on, we'll talk about this more when we show the stills. But uh, yeah. So Brian Thompson played the Night Slasher. Yeah. Uh, this guy the... was in every other movie back then. <sighs> yeah, he's in a yeah. lot of stuff, but he's really creepy. I mean, totally. Yeah, he creepy. is creepy in this movie. Big eighties at peak eighties villain. Jeffrey got, Dahmer on steroids. Yeah, he's got that serial killer <laughs> look. He's got the serial killer name. And he puts on he puts on the creeper hair, dyes it, puts on the glasses, has the silent cold looks, and he yeah he he definitely has that look of a creep. And he, he nails. I hear that the actor who plays it. I hear he's. I actually hear he's a really nice guy. He's a nice guy. Which he is, a nice is, guy. is once again another funny thing when a lot of these actors who play villains end up being the, the cool guys. The in nicest real guy life. in the room. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah I hear. Cool. I hear he's actually a really good dude, which is he's awesome to see. But man, he made. He knows how to sell you, making you hate him, and be like, yeah. oh, he kills another one. He he does sell you really good and, in this way. He definitely doesn't get enough credit for being a uh, formidable villain. Hey, he's well, kind of like Nicholson in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, where he plays a psycho killer a little too well. Yeah, welcome right. to to uh, John. Das hey, Wolfen. John. Hey, hey yeah, I, uh, I would normally be at work right about now, but uh, I've got an ice day because of all the ice. So, uh, but I fell asleep, so I missed the yeah. start of it. That's right. Well, I forgot. Good. He's one of the original Terminator yeah. guys. The three, him, Bill Paxton, and another dude that get wiped out by the Terminator. Brian, yep. Thompson, Brian Thompson's been in hundreds of things. I mean, he's so <laughs> he's such a great guy. One of these guys you can always rely on. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, the Night Slasher, reading the uh, leading the cult, the New World cult. Which, as I say, seems oh, the to, their, new world. their the philosophy new seems world. to be just kill everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Social oh, Darwinist God. cult that despises modern society and believes in killing the weak. He could be a great WEF member, wouldn't he? I was gonna say I'm this is like this movie kind of got ahead of all it's... that. Like these guys really have like a new world order mentality to them, where yeah. as long as they want to do something, the ends justify the means, no matter yeah. what it is, because it's them doing it. No. So you're saying that Klaus Schwab saw this movie in 1985-86 and was like, I wonder if we can do this with economics. But can, can we do it economically? Can this guy win this time? <laughs> so if you get them together and do cult-like things, like get them in group unison to bang tools together, so here it'll they are make them a... look creepy and scary and imposing. Here they are making a Janet Jackson video. Yes, <laughs> I was just going to say the two things I will remember the most from this movie, other than the tagline, are the car and these guys with well, the double axes clacking them together. Yeah, you know, he had an iconic meeting. weapon too. Yeah, he did. Yeah, the Cobra the flay knife was pretty sharp. Awesome. Knife, yeah, which mm -hmm. Stallone commissioned apparently from a guy called Herman Schneider. Forgive me, aficionados of uh, knives. I don't, I don't know the guy, but is that the same guy that made him the knife for? Uh, uh, Poss the Rambo, Rambo movie we were Possibly. talking about this morning, John? Possibly. No, oh, okay. no, that's not the same yeah. guy. Uh, this, I that John and I were on another Stallone movie earlier today. We did uh, uh, First Blood on uh, Gary's channel this morning on Military Monday. All right, yeah, I saw a bit of that, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's so that's a beautiful, if you like that kind of thing, it's a beautiful piece of steel. Uh, also in the, the movie, of course, was Stallone's Squeeze. Yeah, and it's squeezed. funny how he looks the same height as her on screen. Isn't that weird? Isn't um, that weird? She's actually <laughs> probably taller than he is. He's 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 not she's very tall. tall but... No, he's not. I I imagine in real life she's probably like a little bit taller, not like substantially taller. No, like not a, a lot. But, yeah, but so, yeah, I get when you. What is he? Five foot late, ten? Something what? like that? I think he's five foot ten. I can uh, see maybe. that. She's yeah. probably like five eleven or six Vision. foot. She's six so, one. Bridget oh. Nielsen, Ingrid Nudsen, Knudsen, uh, model and businesswoman, here with the robot from uh, Rocky. Yes. Yes, yes. Like another one of Stallone's <laughs> real-life possessions makes it onto the movie, from his cars to his turtles to, to his, his robot. Woman. He just loves it. <laughs> to hey, his squeeze, it. right? Yeah. He probably wow. saves a lot of money with on-set stuff. Oh, just put the and, stuff that I own. It'll be fine. And you know, her, just put the stuff. her character <laughs> needs... 
Cobretti's protection because she witnesses the New World cult killing somebody or doing whatever they do. This is a yeah. very modest outfit she's wearing, which is well. She went from being you know by his side to being with the guy who has the biggest dick that Brandley's ever seen on a man Indeed. within the sum of a few movies. So she changed her positions very quickly. Uh, you see, I can't <laughs> believe you mentioned that. You have the biggest dick I've ever seen on a man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she she roided up Dolph Lundgren really good. Yeah. So she's funnily enough that last shot she's that's her actual hair, and yet that's supposed to be a wig because she wears a wig throughout the rest of the movie. So mm -hmm. weird. Um. Yeah. No, she needs his protection. Uh, there she is with long blonde curly whatever. And yeah. I love the fact is the grenades. You make a big point of him getting the grenades ready. <laughs> <laughs> and again, every cop carry... needs grenades don't Wait, they again, every cop i'm not every sure i would cop. carry them as close to my groin as that nowadays there the feds would be all over the fact that he just has grenades on him even if he's not putting them to use <laughs> even if he's in the let's just say authoritative position that he's yeah. in as like a backup when when shit goes too crazy too wrong that they call him the cobra yeah this would he definitely would not be yeah they would do whatever to be like, oh my god he's got a grenade <laughs> Everyone freak out! <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, he shouldn't probably put him the by fact that he's got grenades. He's a cop, and he's got grenades strapped to him. That screams yeah. canon films right well, there. I just it's think so it's evil. ironic that you know he's there as protection because I think we can all say that Marion Cobretti does not use protection. No, nah. <laughs> no that's, right. that's why he keeps blowing her back out every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. So, um, this movie has a big dirty Harry. Connections. At least two cast members were in Dirty Harry. One, of course, was the infamous yes. Andrew Robinson, who's yes. been in tons of great things as well. He was the psycho in Dirty Harry. Yes, he was. He plays the slight uh, Scorpio. Super, super. I mean, he even looks like Scorpio. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Scorpio. But he plays <laughs> Detective Monty, the fool Monty, um, <laughs> and he is a fool. But he was obviously in Dirty Harry as the Scorpio. What? Yeah. Um, so they didn't cast him as as the Night Slasher, which is interesting. It is interesting, but you know, it's another good thing that the A's had that doesn't get acknowledged enough. Villains are uh, very punchable faces. Even though he wasn't the yes. main villain, he has that look of a guy you just need to punch in the face because he won't shut the hell up. And yeah. when you say God, but what about the victims, guys? Shut up. Well, there's Punch an alternative. The there's an alternative cut of some scenes, and then the script, alternative script, where Monty is revealed to be the ultimate leader of the cult. Really? Yeah, they changed his giving stuff away to them to the to stalk to the girl cop. Mm -hmm. But he was ultimately meant to be the villain in one ed edit of it. But uh, really? they, didn't, they didn't go with that. They just made him a sleaze ball instead. So. <laughs> Uh, another Dirty Harry connection, of course, is uh, Rennie Santoni, who played Sergeant Tony. Sorry, he's Tony, Gon yep. he's Tony mm -hmm. Gonzalez in Cobra. He was Chico Gonzalez in Dirty Harry in yep. no way typecast. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been in a ton of stuff as well. But yeah, so he's Gonzalez in both of those. So two, two Dirty Harry connections, at least. Well, wasn't he also like Poppy on Seinfeld? Yes, he was Bobby, the dirty, horrible, <laughs> manky restaurant guy, or whatever he was. Yeah. Had fun on the couch. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> He's another always good value for money, wherever you see him in. Uh, yep. Still going to, I think he's still around. Yeah. 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 Um, but there he is in uh, with Clint. So Clint's, yeah, strong, dirty Harry connections in this. And it does have a kind of a dirty Harry feel in places, in a lot of places. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. especially with the uh, topical subject matter, it's not as heavy about it as Dirty Harry, per se, because it's a little bit more stripped down. Because Dirty Harry really focuses on, no, should, it, should they, should they not? What is the line? Like, you, you yeah. get hints of it a little subtly, especially earlier on in Cobra. Cobra kind of says, yeah, we'll, we'll let you know it's there, but... We just want to get to a point and kill the shit out of bad guys. And, right. And that's fine. Yeah. I, lo I love both of these movies because they both serve the press. Because where Dirty Harry really, it, it touches on the subject nearly beginning to end. Yeah. yeah. And then they had Lee Garlington who played Nancy Stock, the dirty cop. And she's a real, makes a real cult of herself in this movie. Um, 
and she's done a ton of stuff as well. Yep. Yeah. Actually, oh yeah. You used to see her she, on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yep. She's been in lots of things and she actually cleans up quite nice. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, um, enough said. Uh, well, uh, David Rash, of course, Sledgehammer himself. Was I said the, Sledgehammer. Was the soon to be slaughtered photographer boyfriend. Right. Um, yeah, I love Sledgehammer. So it's always good to see David uh, Rush, former Second City uh, performer, was in an episode of SCTV and was, was in a Second City comedy troupe for a while. Nice. Yeah. And then uh, directed by, now this is interesting because directed by George P. Cosmatos, Greek Italian director yeah. who lives in BC, Victoria, or lived in Victoria, BC, who directed things like First Blood Part Two and Leviathan, mm -hmm. Escape to Athena. And tombstone, but interestingly enough, uh, I mean, there's a Kurt Russell basically shot tombstone. That's what I'm, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting enough, Kurt Russell basically directed it, and the same rumors go around a lot about this that Sly directed it, and Cosmatos basically handled a lot of the production stuff on set, mm -hmm. and it was really Sly directing. So there's a lot of back and forward on these. It's the same as you say, Little Chad, with Tombstone. I mean, the guy had a great track record, but that's two movies where maybe he was better as a kind of a fixer of stuff. And like, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But his name is on it as director anyway. But, uh, well, uh, I can tell hey, you. I well, know. I'm going to do the work and you'll get the oh, credit for it. See? What, what have you got to what lose? To complain about? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if Sly had a more positive experience, but Kurt Russell definitely did not have no. one. He wasn't doing it because it was a positive thing for him. No, uh, although I could see Sly in mid '80s being like, "Hire this guy as the director," because he had worked with him on First Blood Part Two, and he's like, "I can run this show, and yeah. I will do what I want." <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it was written so it was loosely based on a book called *A Running Duck* by a British crime writer, Paula Gosling, also entitled *Fair Game*. The book had two titles at various points. It was made into a movie again with uh -huh. a Baldwin in it called *Fair Game*. Yeah. There's a Baldwin. Oh, Shit, there's a how Baldwin. triggering. Sorry, it was a Baldwin. Duck! <laughs> a running duck, even. Yeah. So, so yeah. this movie... This book that movie been, was a vehicle for the for the model, not him, though. This book but, has but, been but, shopped around like a, mm -hmm. you know, $2, whatever. Um, yeah, it's been shot around, clearly, especially with the Baldwin <laughs> involved. <laughs> she did get a writing credit on this movie, but really, there's very little resemblance when you look at it between the two, between mm -hmm. Cobra and... At least with Cobra, they changed the name. It's like, you know, if you're going to change things enough, and I've said this before, that with any big thing, just change the name. And they they, they did. They would go, oh, we got to yeah. piggyback yeah. off the name. Nope, they just said, all right, we're, we're going to change his name. So and they did. I respect that. Well, there was rumors that they were going to put a version of the novel called Cobra, change the name to Cobra, and put Sylvester Stallone's name in it as the writer. But the, uh, the writer of the book, the original book, said, nah. <laughs> Vince in the chat has got the entire point of fair game. He, he oh, has yeah. got it right there. The topless yeah. exactly. That was it. Yeah, that was the point of fair game. No That's a, it's a terrible movie, but a hey, worthy man. endeavor. <laughs> so just before we move on to some stills, we get uh, the cinematographer was a guy called Rick Waite, uh -huh. who veteran veteran guy done dozens of movies, Long Riders, Footloose, Red Dawn, ton of great stuff. If you look him up. Um, Producers were the Go-Go Boys in name. Whether they did any work or not, I don't know. Apart from product placement, they were good at that. <laughs> there you go. And then the soundtrack. Well, there was a, a uh, the sound the, the score was by Sylvester Levey, a Serbian guy who did like Scarface, Flashdance, yeah, Airwolf, ton of stuff. Peak. Ultra. You want to talk peak eighties? Yeah. All oh, that music yeah. that he did for like Scarface and this. Oh my God. Yeah. But this I need this on vinyl. I need well, a vinyl of this so I bad. I ordered it a couple of weeks ago and I from Amazon. And then I got an email saying it's been returned to them. And here's your, here's your money back. Oh no. I wanted, the, for, I wanted it for the show. You know, I've got it. Digital, but I wanted it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's peak 80s. Yeah, soundtrack. it is. So you've yeah. got like um, John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band, who I didn't know apart from Eddie and the Cruisers. Yeah, because they were they Eddie. Like song on there. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Miami Sound Machine. How much more 80s can you get than that? You can't. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, 
there's some good stuff in there. Yeah, it's a brilliant soundtrack. So uh, there was actually a song, apparently, the uh, Stan Bush song, "The Touch" from the Transformers movie. Yeah. Yep. Was meant to be in this movie, but it, for whatever reason, didn't end up. In so glad it made it to the Transformers yeah. because it, it it works better in that. For it, sure, it fits that. that I don't think it would so fit this better. one too well. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, no. <laughs> yeah. And the stunt coordinator was a guy called Terry Leonard, still working today. I mean, he's in, you know, he was one of Harrison Ford's doubles in the Raiders of the Lost Ark and other. What movies. do you mean? I have doubles. That's right. <laughs> Apocalypse Now, Blues Brothers, Conan. He's been in a ton of shit. He's a great guy. He, he's the real hero. All the stuntmen are the real heroes of the films, man. Die Hard oh, 3. Yeah. Die Hard 3. He's working on. <coughs> uh, yeah, so the soundtrack. Sorry, yeah. Good stuff. So, um, Gladys Knight. Wow. Gladys Knight, yeah. That's so uh, 80s. <laughs> Gary Wright. Yeah, Gary Wright. Robert anyway, Stafford. that's the cast and crew and the, uh, the major players. There is obviously a lot more uh to talk about because we're going to show some uh some stills like we do on toxic tuesday did i tell you nick has a great show on his channel called toxic tuesday you're a part of it and <laughs> you've been on it twice and it's you've been you've been on it twice no dude i, I this I've is one of the earliest ones that we did i think it was like episode 10 or something i can't remember the exact number because I have not kept track of that stuff well enough, and I got to re-update the playlist. It's been like a year since I've done it. But yeah, obviously, so, I was like, we got to talk Cobra. And yeah, yeah. that was historical. Just, this, historical. this movie's totally toxic. You know that. So oh, I hope, yeah. hope everybody out there in the chat is having a good time. There's a lot of chats flying by. I appreciate you chatting away there. It's great. I know that uh, Nick and Vince are also on the Rumble side. Yep. Uh, people are watching 13 more. on Rumble. Yeah, people are watching over there. Usually do quite well in the end. I'm almost up to 200 subs in Rumble. Nice. And I do, and I do, do some exclusive stuff there. Uh, it's it's a shame. Rumble. Oh, no Rumble yeah, bigots. It's a shame Razor couldn't make it today because this is his... This is his... That's the opening every video intro. he does. Yeah. 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 The wonderful the Razor Mike. Fist. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's why he did the... Uh, he wears the aviators that he did because he... Uh, for his Rage of Holic Cinema, because he used to actually yeah. not. If you dig way I back, remember. he didn't wear glasses always. And mm -hmm. when he did for the Cobra video, it was one of those Never things where off, the huh? fans were just like, hey, that's your look. And mm -hmm. it just goes to show you, you know, once again, the market decides and it kind of became his thing because mm -hmm. people affiliated him with that. And yeah, the rest is history. Yep, the double axes, clacking yeah. the axes together. Yeah, I know. As I say, very 80s music video. Yep. <laughs> oh, yep, yeah. We still hadn't moved on from showing the credits before a film yet yeah. in the 80s. We were still doing it then. So we get to. Um, I mean, there's so many great sequences in this movie, and it doesn't waste a lot of time. I mean, it does. Well, this, uh, this opening one's awesome. Yeah, yeah there's more it's it's like an yeah. hour and twenty four minutes or something like that. It's yeah. it looks like it's very to a point where the movie, as we mentioned, Dirty Harry is like an hour and fifty, maybe two hours, somewhere around there. This movie is now, very lean, and I like mm -hmm. that. Now, this this is our uh, first villain. Marco Rodriguez, who's been in many, many TV shows and movies, including The Crow. Uh, oh, yeah. Very recognizable guy. He's in a lot of TV. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got that distinctive kind of pockmarked face. So he's our first. And he's he comes in here to, to um, destroy some groceries. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And and basically, this is yes, just what against the produce aisle. It's one big excuse for product placement. You're seeing all these brands being destroyed. <laughs> Bounty huggies. They it's need everywhere. to get an excuse to give the introduction to the Cobra. They need an excuse. Like, yeah. oh, what we? How do we introduce the character to set the tone for the movie? I'll oh, just have some guy go to grocery store. Who cares what his motives are? Yeah. It'll be fine. Just get him in there and the realize Cobra's show up. And Take his ass out. You realize the, cop, the aunts will love it. You realize yeah. the cops there are only protecting the donut house in that strip mall. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we used to have a Winchell's when I was growing up here in Sedalia. So, yeah. All right. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's an old uh, chain that's not around anymore. Yeah. All of a sudden, Steve Martin <laughs> pops up and goes, 
He's got something against the vegetables. That's right. It's not round anymore, John, because Cobra and this guy destroyed it. That's why. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's, that murdering. Makes sense. He's murdering prices. And meanwhile, up above the border, Tim Hortons is like, yes, destroy all the other donut shops. <laughs> sick, of, <laughs> sick of melons. <laughs> out the there are melons everywhere. Get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> the chat is on fire here. This is <laughs> Three, four, five, six, and there's there's your proof. It's a it's a it's a Christmas movie, um, right. but yeah, he's like a Miller. Oh, <laughs> but it's an excuse. This is where the Cannon Boys came in. It's an excuse for product placement. Everything that blows up, you see the product name first. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and, good. Yeah. Oh. Okay, it's a Christmas movie. What more do I need to see? Am I a crazy person in thinking we should really have a Cannon films today? Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. He's blowing well, heads off. I think it's blood. out there. I think you have to check out the I mean, uh, the the uh, free with ads section on Vudu or uh, one of these other. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know what? Blumhouse. Modern day B movies or it's, not, Blumhouse called... was doing that for a while, where they were keeping the budgets like around ten to twelve million dollars, yeah. and they would, but, but yeah. they're specializing mainly in horror. It's called the Asylum. Oh yeah. And they're the ones is... that have the uh, uh, the spirit of uh, the Go Go Boys in them. Right. Oh yeah, right. right. So that, that's yeah, you're right, John. Yeah, they've they're keeping that going. So Vince is that. That's why the cops were there so quickly. It's a donut shop. <laughs> 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 but yeah, he blows the shit out of this produce. It's just like, oh man. But anyway. All set up, of course, so our hero could be called in by the cops, the, by the shitty mo detective Monty, and the mm, protect yeah. the rights. Yeah, oh. bitch Hold boy. On. Go, go back one frame, well, and just uh, let's on. see if you can. There oh, I guess maybe not. Hang on. I was about oh, to we'll say just going. just to appreciate how clear the rice aroni product placement was. Yeah. Oh, go -go yeah. Boys. It was like <laughs> Lord, we've got it turned perfect to the screen. Every box is right there with the brand clear so That's that right. you can get your money's worth. They even got Huggies in because it was Huggies was on the front yeah. of the, the, yep. the yeah, front of the cart. Yeah. Yeah, the cart. <laughs> and you know that the Go-Go boys were just having those checks sent straight to them. That's like, right. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Warner Brothers making we'll get you in a Warner's movie. We get well, you in a Warner's movie with Sylvester Stallone. Had to pay for over the top somehow. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the uh, and then we get the the, the there's more. Yeah, Velveeta. Yeah, I mean it's perfect okay. setting. Perfect setting at a supermarket because they get all the product placement they want. <laughs> the Dan Francisco. Church. It's a cigarette aisle. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> The best is yet to come, though. The be the two best product placements are yet to come. Oh yeah, I, I especially one of them is one of a, a certain thing that, growing up obviously in the nineties, I missed that. There's the rice aroni. Ah, rice aroni. Seven up. Rice seven up. Seven up. Yeah. yeah, but look. I mean, just look. Look at the perfect. Like, you have to to frame that shot to capture your products that clearly. Yeah. It's, oh yeah. That's right. I work at a grocery store. Our end caps and displays are not that perfect. No, they're yeah, not that yeah. pretty. Yeah. <laughs> they, wow. I mean, quite... they actually they actually once upon a time they they, they they actually cared about merit even in a grocery right, store. Here we go. So you get the Pepsi thing. Yes, I miss great. those machines, dude. I, I remember being a kid and seeing those yeah. and thinking those were the coolest thing ever. Yeah. And I was and just then... like, man, they should have never done away with those. What what dumbasses? Know, those things are so neat. cool. And then you've got the the Coors placement, of course. Oh. Thank, God it, thank God it wasn't. He drank a Bud out Light. the job. Thank God it wasn't a Bud Light. <laughs> he, he he drank out the job. He he's about you think okay. He's trying. He wants to open. Maybe he's, you know, obviously he's gonna throw the can to get you know, distract the guy. But he, he takes a good old sip before he does. I'm just like yes. <laughs> well, it's, you endangered the public. <laughs> no, I defended two huggies and rescued a Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, maybe Mike Mior from Suicidal Tendencies would have been very mad. He should have teamed up with the Cobra at this scene because yeah. all he wanted was his Pepsi, and that son of a bitch blew up that Pepsi. That's right. And More... Mior would have not taken that. He would have, no, he would have Cobra wanted didn't... This is where he fits in some really great one liners. Oh, and, and some of the best. And we're going to show a little bit of it. A clip of it that the uh, talks about the I don't like those shots and you know I, I hate psychos and all that. 
just first few lines are just killer brilliantly you want to talk (laughs) so this i mean i couldn't quite figure out the guy's motivation because he wants to shoot the place up i guess he just wants to get television in so he can go in about his cult right it was what about the it? new order, man. Yeah. It was about the new order. It didn't matter where, as long as it was about the new the order. The new world order. That's so it. the risk of the copyright, YouTube copyright gods, I will be playing uh, a little clip of this. Nally, car chase, does it, oh, here we go. This is it here. Price check. Price check. <laughs> Come on, man. I got a bomb here. I'll kill her. I'll blow this whole place up. Go ahead. I'll shop here. Duh. <laughs> That's a great line. Yeah. I know. Hey, just relax, amigo. You want to talk? We'll talk. I'm a sucker for good conversation. I don't want to talk to you. Now you bring in the television cameras in here now. Mom, bring it in! Can't do that. Why? I don't deal with psychos. I put, I put them, them away. away. No if the stream gets man. blocked, just stay around everybody. Uh, You're looking we'll be back. Fucking don't forget about Rumble, I'm too. I'll put up a tap for Rumble. You're a disease. And I'm the cure. I'm the cure. And then he blows them away. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'll stop it there because I'm getting all the warnings. But yeah, that's the, at that point he uh, th- pulls the gun out, uh, the knife out, throws it at the guy, then shoots him, and then. Uh... My favorite line though is "Go ahead, I don't shop here." <laughs> I'm blowing this place up. Go <laughs> ahead, I don't shop here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got the look. He's got the glasses. He's got the matchstick. It just yeah. looks great. Yeah. And then he puts the hot gun back in his pants. He yeah. yeah. He put the cobra back in his pants. He put the snake back in the cage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. And then this great encounter with the shitty journalist. Wouldn't we all want to see journalists, so called journalists? Oh dude. He, yeah, I, I watch it, I think about you know current year and all the bullshit around it. And I'm thinking, man, this nowadays. This is the expectation for these people. Like, this is the type of guy who stood out, and there was one of those things where they tolerated him. But now, this is the expectation: is guys like this, where yeah, they, sure. you know, think about them. They're victims too, and they have the rights. Yeah. They do to a point, but when you cross a certain line, well, it guess shows what? them the dead kid. Like that's who you're you're defending. Yeah, the shit ex- that did this. explain this away to their to his family and yeah. and the fact the audacity. I was just like, wow, of course. And that, nowadays, that's standard for reporters to act like that, no matter yeah. how much someone does terrible atrocities. But luckily, it's followed up by a great, brilliant scene here where he pushes another car to create his own right. <laughs> Don't want to move, huh? Okay, okay. I'm bigger I'll than you. you. I'll do the movie for you. And once again, a scene that you would think at face value is just a very funny, amusing scene. You didn't mm-hmm. realize it was setting up a scene that would pay off, but it does because it's yeah. still good on its own merits, funny scene. But it does set up something later for when he parks there again. <laughs> yeah, it's but, it's quite funny that. And then I, I mean, he's he's not on the the night slasher case, but he's clearly keeping tabs on it. Yes, uh, uh, you know, even though he's because he's he's in the zombie squad as they call it later. Yeah, and because he's out and doing shit at night that the rest of the cops don't want to do, and here with all the dirty sleaze bags and um, and there was a real life zombie squad apparently in LA long ago. It's, it's based on a real thing, but uh, they're the dirty guys that did all the shit that nobody wanted to do. You mean so like Dirty they're... Harry? Every dirty yeah. job that comes along. Right. That's right. Yep. So they keep calling Cobra in when they can't handle shit, but they they, they kind of don't like him either, which is yeah. dude. More product placement. The ad for uh, Toys R Us, man. Oh, I missed that. I missed that. Yeah. 
I remember getting so many toys at Toys R Us way back when with was Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers, yeah. Spider Man, the animated series, Batman the animated series. Man, Toys R Us was the place. So there are yeah, up to 16, 16 of these deaths, slasher, night slasher deaths. The rest of the cops don't think it's a they think it's one guy, but Stallone knows better. It's and a, they were all in denial. Oh, no, you have credibility. It can't be that. How do you know that? It shows you even even when you have authority next to your name or you appear to be legitimate, you could still be wrong about shit too. Mm-hmm. So you're just to go back to the pizza cutting. What is your opinion on that, Nick? Is that a, a valid way to treat pizza? Oh, straight up. <laughs> he's, he's straight up, man. Especially when the place the you're getting it from forget uh, forgets how to cut a pizza. You got to cut it somehow, mm-hmm. right? So you got to just do it yourself. And, he only you know, had one slice. I mean, he's such a wimp. Good. He can't eat one slice in one go. Well, you know, he <laughs> has his way of eating. I myself would have you know, devoured the entire thing. But, you know, I guess he has such an intense cobra diet. And with the cobra diet, he has to eat in moderation. So, so smile like uh, we all know, of course, that First Blood is a Christmas movie, but the greatest Christmas movie of all time is Invasion USA, and that's an no. undisputed fact. <laughs> no, I, as they say in Twitter, I presume no one will disagree with my choice. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many great things about Invasion USA. I'm sure you've talked about it before. We did it last time, I think, didn't we? Didn't we do we did. We did yeah. uh, for Toxic Tuesday, but yeah. just, what, just from the opening sequence ago? with the like the migrants coming on the boat and yeah. they just uh-huh. wipe out the Coast Guard. It's <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's a Christmas movie, though. They try to blow away a girl dra- decorating a tree. I mean, come on. With oh, a, it with a rocket launcher. Yeah. yeah, it's a brutal fleck. Speaking of Chuck Norris, I, I think when we do in our Chuck Norris month again, we still need to do Delta Force and we still need to do the sequels to Missing in Action. Oh, we do. Yeah. 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 Missing in Action. Sequel, and then missing the Action sequel. to the beginning, which yeah, was the, the beginning. first movie they filmed, but they the pre- released it second. The prequel that is the, the sequel that's a prequel or the prequel that's a sequel. You well, decide. It's the, it's the <laughs> prequel because they filmed it first, and then the Go Go Boys decided that it wasn't action enough, so they actually shot the second one and released it yes. first. You are so, right. <laughs> I know, and we did talk about that. We did a we did the missing in action stream here a few months ago. We did Delta Force too, and, and we tried to explain it with a chart, um, how the films were, which first, but and the title changed back to this, and then it changed back to that, and I like, forget it. <laughs> Just watch them and watch the second one first. That's it. <laughs> But yeah, I think we didn't we do Invasion USA last time in Canon Film Club. I'm so Delta delayed. Force. Delta oh, we Force. Delta we Force. haven't done Invasion USA. We haven't. No, Invasion. We haven't. Uh-huh. But Toxic Tuesday's done it, I think. We yeah. have not done Delta but, Force on Toxic Tuesday. But Invasion USA. Oh, Invasion USA. We did. Oh, we did yeah, Invasion yeah. USA. Oh, oh his, yeah. I think says Chris was like a rocket launcher. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. Yeah. No. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, if Chuck Norris is reading this, Invasion <laughs> USA is the best. Please don't kill me. <laughs> it's too late. Chuck hears everything. So here's where uh, they, they call Cobra in to do the dirty work, and they tell him, you basically, do whatever you, you do. Do you do what you do? So that voodoo so well. Make sure the whores are staying in line. <laughs> and then it's an excuse for some 80s music and uh, a tour of the sleaze pots of LA. You know it. Uh, but yeah, because this by this time, it was Bridget. Ne- we we were talking, but Bridget Nielsen's character has seen the murder and is now uh, seen the murdering. So her boyfriend. Oh no, he's, her boyfriend isn't murdered yet. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming up. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. And there's where she she gets uh, she 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 gets uh, to handle some cold, long cold steel. <laughs> in true 80s fashion we have a photo shoot an 80s film either has to have a photo shoot or a training montage in it yeah. one of the two and they've combined the fashion. that was yeah they combined that too they straight up said I what if we, what if we put like the board together in an orgy kind of thing, and know? they created this yeah. <laughs> they needed more side boob here they didn't get enough side boob <laughs> 
They needed better wigs is what they needed. Oh, they did. oh sure. dude, the wig stuff. Oh, <laughs> man. Now, if there's one thing that really shows as far as a flaw, it's the wigs. That I believe not... that after this movie, those wigs escaped to the L.A. sewers and raised an entire colony. And they're still living under there today. There's a whole wig society. And they're going to come up and take over. Trust me. Oh, like I'm asking you to marry me. Nice. <laughs> Such a gentleman. He, he almost felt like he needed to get whacked, didn't he? He did. Oh, uh, yes. But yeah, it was not a big role. I think he actually had a few more scenes that were trimmed out. They did trim about 40 minutes out to get the R rating, and then they ditched a few unnecessary things. Uh, hmm. Some people claim it leaves a lot of plot holes. I'm not really sure it does. I don't. It's a pretty straightforward plot. Bad guys kill people. Bad guys go after a girl. Cobra defends girl. Cobra kills bad people. What's the problem? What's the problem with? What, yeah. I have to say, that chick was hot back then. She was. She was pretty impressive. She didn't age well. Have you seen, seen the, uh, the movie Domino that she made? No. Domino? I did not know she was in a movie Control called Domino. on nudity in that. Whoa. Yeah. Not that I recommend such things. I'm a that's no. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. So, um, it's as if you've got a leather fetish, you're doing well in this movie, too. But. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, this is, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff set in this hospital, which, uh, again, they've destroyed, they destroy a supermarket. The next thing they do is destroy a hospital. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they need to. Once the damage is done, the grocery shop, like, oh, there's no more room for product place. Okay, I guess we'll just do the opposite product placement. And you want to a good image to make the Night Slasher look like the most utter creep when he goes up that elevator with the lady. She's like, hey, there's a health code here. And he just stay, he just stays stone cold with the blade in the back of his hand, yeah. doesn't say a word. And he's got that, he's got like that rape face on because he slipped his hair back. Know. Put on those widescreen TV glasses. I'm like, yeah, do like a, like a freaking well, rapist. You can tell he's a bad guy because he's sweating so much. <laughs> <laughs> Did you forget about the scene in Over the Top when St Stallone was arm wrestling that one guy earlier in the movie? And now we're Stallone, the guy he was facing sweating, but everyone in the yeah. room was sweating along <laughs> with him. <laughs> right? <laughs> Stallone sweats gun oil, though. So that's. <laughs> 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 Never, the bad guys just sweat, you know, horrible, putrid, whatever. So one of the cuts that was made apparently was that the, the Night Slasher does kill the janitor. Yes. Uh, he does. I don't think he is that in the movie or is that just was that cut? It says it was cut, but I believe it was cut because you yeah. don't see the first uh kill you. Yeah, it's it's it definitely happened off screen because you just it's kind of just goes straight into yeah. he's got the suit on. You know, that's fine. I, I could buy. It. I mean, that's not something that has to be in there, but it's one of those things. He's a bad guy. You know what he does. Okay, I could get with it. Yeah. So apparently, things that were cut included the first murder victim having her hands severed. An extended uh -huh. autopsy scene, including lingering shots of naked and mutilated bodies. A longer death for Ingrid's photographer, Dan, including a shot of him slipping on his own blood. Oh, And more deaths of the townspeople during the climax, including a person getting hit in the face with an axe. This yeah, this is the scene where he's dying his hair. Yeah. I, 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 was, I always remember that one. It, it, he just it, wanted it, to ask the guy a question. Yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if I was a bad guy, I'd swear if I was standing near Stallone, too. <laughs> is it me, or is the Night Slasher's girlfriend kind of look kind of like Nancy Allen rode hard and she put up wet? I mean, yeah, you know. Stalk. And I keep yeah. wanting to call him the Night Stalker, because her right. name's Stalk. Yeah. He's Night the Night Slasher. Slasher. Yeah. She's Stalk. <laughs> but she does look like Nancy Allen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she's the... She's, she's the uh, she's the, discount store. She's Nancy the cop that's that it. looks like she wears comfortable shoes. Right. All right. Here, right there. There's the payoff where the car was already moved and prepared for him to arrive back. He's like, You're an outstanding citizen. I'm like, Oh, that's great. <laughs> so the next time he comes back around, it's already moved and he doesn't have to do the moving himself. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love it. 
Said, and there wouldn't Whoa. be a, an 80s movie without people coming up on ev- uh, escalators. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that adult is back on the escalator. It ain't just the kid, too. It's the adult in this movie. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, dude. I don't... I, I only think I've seen the theatrical cut of this movie. I don't, I don't think I've seen... Because I've never watched this movie on TV before, so I'm going to assume that if there is a, another cut, I don't think there's an uncut version it. out yeah. there that I'm aware of. Oh, no, man. The, the only version, I, I mean, there may be TV versions that are edited, but I've got the collector's edition one, which I think is the only version you can get. On the I on think. the Blu-ray? Because yeah. there's that version of it on Blu-ray, then there's the packaged edition where it comes with like four or five of the Stallone movies. And that that that's to my knowledge, that's the only versions of this movie that are out there. Yeah. It, uh, as far as Cobra goes on Blu-ray, is those. Yeah. So this stuff goes on uh, quite a bit, and the, there's quite a lot of stuff set in this hospital. Um, this is kind of like Dirty Harry meets Halloween, kind of. Oh, you know, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Actually, oh. that's actually. Makes mm. a lot of sense considering <laughs> the Night Stalker is basically a mass murderer, yeah, right? right? A, without a, a mask, there is a slasher horror feel to it. Yeah, the 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 B movie horror music too, because there are songs mm-hmm. on here that kind of teeter on the horror aspect too. Yep. And they all they, all his victims run from him, and they're obviously obviously they're mostly women. He runs. He 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 has. Oh, sorry, he walks. Kind of like yeah. the like the slasher too. He's got that that slasher killer. He's never in a hurry. Do. Nope. Yeah, mm-hmm. no matter how much you run, uh, he's always catching up, and mm-hmm. the girl always takes a fall on the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely, man, uh, that makes so much damn sense. So you you really hit on something with that. Yeah, I, it's just it, it always felt that way to me. Yeah, when it I, does. When I you saw mention this movie. it. It mm-hmm. does feel like a Halloween or something like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like the RG Godzilla things escalated quickly. <laughs> it's one of the it look, man. Uh, up until he made uh, Rambo, this is one of the most grisly friggin' movies that Stallone was in. I mean, oh, yeah. Right. It, yeah, it's mm-hmm. all, I mean, all the blood shots too. Like you see mm-hmm. bodies of like bloody shots of victims too, and everything. I mean, that's mm-hmm. toy stuff that you see that stereotypically fit for horror. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It really, it really, it was like, it was really definitely, it really is. A, come on, you look at that, that looks like a straight up killer from the horror movie. horror movie. You look at yeah. that shot of contacts, you're thinking, oh, that's got to be some killer for a horror movie. And all of a sudden, you see Celeste's like, oh, never mind, that's action. That's action. <laughs> <laughs> it's an action pick, br- br- brought us back to reality. There it is. Uh, <laughs> so he's He's been attacked at home by now, hasn't he? Wasn't that, yeah, he he was yeah, because he, yeah. he beat the shit out of those guys, and he had to run to his car to get straight to back to the hospital because that's when you start to get, like get some hints that there's someone who's in on it from his own um, s- staff, the authorities, and of course they're all in denial. They all think because he's a cobra, he's crazy, or he doesn't have like a- official credibility. So there's no <coughs> way he can be right because yeah. he's not one of them. Even though he is right, he's had a lot of great hunches, but he's he's not right because he operates differently, and because he operates differently, he's default wrong. You know, I'm glad to see that Bridget Nielsen's character wasn't a girl boss, but she had the smarts to hit the alarm buttons and all that stuff, and she did survive. You know, oh, that was that was a good way of yeah. st- getting the villain off her back. I mean, if you, in that scenario, it makes sense. Like it's once again when you make the lady intelligent and adapt to her environment. Yep, that makes a lot more sense. And it's believable, especially it's not like she's like a superhuman too. She's no. just a regular lady. She's a fashion who, model. Yeah, yeah, fashion model, and she's trying to get away from some crazy psychopath. And that was very I say okay. You, the only way I'm going to get out of this is use the environment to my advantage. And she did. She adapted really quickly. She had to act fast. And when you're in an adrenaline from something, whether it's a fist fight or something, you do act quickly. You have to be a lot more reactionary. And that absolutely made sense for her that that would be the best decision than for her to hide in another room that he'll magically pop up at. Yeah. Yeah, this is when uh, Cabretti decides. Yeah, we got to take this show on the road. We got to get right. out of here. Yeah. We get, we got to get you in isolation. 
I need it. I think In other words, basically, he, I'm going to use you as bait. I'm going to get this guy. I think guy. he's already, <laughs> didn't he already say that he thinks there's an insider in the police? Yeah, yeah he yeah. did. Yeah. He, they were arguing at the office and all that jazz. Yeah, absolutely was. Mm -hmm. and, of course, they're in denial about it because of course they're in denial. They can't, once again, to them, because the Cobra plays by different roles, he's not allowed to be right, even when he is. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. when you're right, you're wrong. And now we get another classic 80s uh, car, car sequence. Yeah, oh, yes. this and, is uh, really fun. Cobra's cool it as is, hell. man. Uh, movies need to get back to having stuff like this. This so, is the reason why George Miller's movies are so, so popular. So it's I the get, real stunts by real. Oh, real I know it's all stunt. practical stunts, too, mm -hmm. isn't it? I mean, it's, yep. it's yep. just so. Well, we, I've got a bit of a montage of the car stuff, yes. which do it, we'll, man. I'll we'll play as much as I can of it before the, the, we get before cut the off. <laughs> I think I'd be vomiting by now. <laughs> right? <laughs> Deceleration trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the bay between turning around upside down, driving backwards temporarily so he could shoot back at the guys in back yeah. of it, which is badassly made. And then it's... don't forget, he went on the second floor of a parking garage <laughs> and melted right through, and then and then all of a sudden up and down, up and down like a roller coaster. I'm you like, mean those cars? I'm sure that was more than one vehicle they used. In those oh, movies. oh God, yeah. There was four. Really, yes, yeah. we're, we're four talking about the yeah. movie logic here. Logic yeah. here. So there's no truth in the rumor that when Stallone said "get down" at the end, that Cla John Claude Van Damme started dancing. <laughs> it's always great when you quote in a breaking reference. There you go. I know. Oh, we're, we're it is breaking. not a meeting of the Canon Film Club unless John Fuck. You know what? My favorite. Is, the oh, other man. great thing is like you guys have obviously probably seen Ninja 3 The Domination. Oh, good. Yeah. Where, oh, yeah. where oh. they got the same chick from breaking. Yeah. <laughs> and I, right. I, got, I got mad to watch that movie and I was trying to explain it because he hadn't met Chismo and, and he hadn't seen it. And I was like, well, she's a she's an a pole working electrician person but she also does aerobic instruction and then she yeah. gets possessed by the spirit of an angel ninja and goes on a r murder rampage it's a canon movie I, I, yep. I, 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 it's flash day it's light i don't see the problem with any of that i mean it seems lo logical to me I mean, oh my god i know it's good we're gonna do we're actually we've we talked about the ninja movies in an earlier uh, yeah. episode but we we'll probably do break in at some point, I do want to oh, break, break yeah. in and break. Are you going to combine break in two electric boogaloo and break we'll do in both? Kind of got to, don't I think you? We'll do both at once. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have when Shrimpy uh, goes dances across the ceiling. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, the eighties.
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. A treasure trove of cringe, isn't Does it? Does anyone else it's feel like, awful. you know, Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon should have been co-produced by Canon? Because uh, It, it sure here. seems like it, doesn't it? I mean, wow. One of the greatest movies ever. If you're a martial arts fan, that is one of the greatest movies ever. It really mm -hmm. is. And it's total cheese. The whole thing. From beginning to They stole the bad guy. It, that's Lex Luthor from the fucking Superman movies of the seventies. That that's mm -hmm. him. He's complete with the monster in the tank that you never saw in the, Eddie Ar you, know, you know, with Eddie yeah. Arcadia. And then you, yeah, you Eddie the, Arcadia. Like, he, he's Lex Luthor in the yeah, Superman movies. The big, <laughs> the big honking hench, hit man, uh, henchman. And yep. then you've got the mall girlfriend who doesn't quite understand what's Ms. going Tess on. Miss Tess That's her. Yep. 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 <laughs> okay. I see it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Well, if you see, if you've seen the uncut version of the original Superman, he's got a monster in a tank you never see that they feed all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you've never seen the uncut version of that first Superman movie, they're like when he drills into the ground and he goes to Lex's uh, office and pushes in the door to meet him for the first time and, as Superman. There's a whole list of tests he goes through. There's like three different chambers. One of them, he gets shot up by machine guns. Another one, they, they uh, use flamethrowers on him. And another one, they try to freeze him before he even gets to that doorway. There's a lot cut out. If you watched it on television when it first came on, that's when you saw that stuff. They, mm -hmm. they tend to do that a lot when they put things on TV. You know, they'll put a lot of the stuff that hit the cutting room floor in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so this is where he tells them that there's a a leak because they don't believe him they mm -hmm. don't believe of course him, they don't. don't believe him yeah, yeah of course not. the it's most amazing. secure most secure police station in history everything is the most secure in history they yeah. they can't accept the fact that maybe he might be right about something because they have their mm. preconceived notion of him yeah. because of the way he operates business and that everything has to work and i'm not saying as a knock that hey the law never works but the thing is cobra makes a lot of great points that you're telling us to work around a system when the villains we're going up against don't play by the same. Don't rules. care about the system. Yeah, right? yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not saying to knock on every method of the law because there there is a time and place for those methods too. Even, but the fact that we have to knock on Cobra's methods just because he's trying to think like more like how would the villain do this? It's really sensible. I mean, it mm -hmm. makes sense. I know it's pro calls, but that's why you have a guy like Cobra. You should at least at the very minimum at least entertain the possibility. You don't have to be on board with it, but like, Hey, okay. You know what? Let's keep that into consideration. Cause this guy has experience with these type of guys. He knows what the loonies are like. Yeah. Get some great shots of the Southern Californian, uh, interior in these, uh, uh, finals, you know, towards the, the cinematography in this movie is pretty cool, it's man. Pretty damn it's really good. good. Yeah, it's a straightforward '80s looking mm -hmm. movie. It looks mm -hmm. nice, and it, it really makes California look beautiful. I got, <laughs> I gotta say, California looks awesome. This is, I remember when it does. I was into the idea, which I laugh at now. But once upon a time, I wanted to live in California. I'm sure parts of the state that still look great. But to me, it was just like ever. I'd see all the shots in movies like this, and to me, that was like whoa. <laughs> like, I someday. gotta live in California someday. I mean, I've heard San Francisco's gone to hell, but I I was stationed there in early '86, and it was a gorgeous city. It really oh, was. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A physically beautiful um, state. I mean, Palm mm -hmm. Springs and the interior and the desert areas are all wonderful. I just Smilex is on fire today. Nice black <laughs> whippets and drink real ale. That's a British joke. <laughs> It's like the old working class guys would wear the fat, flat cap and those have a whip it. They all got their scalies on. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very uh, astute observation there. Yes. But uh, I shall return. You shall return. Where are, are you, you coming? Are you a gainer? Or that was I will survive. Sorry. Hey, 70s, read the private chat. All right. Read his private. No. Oh, okay. Oh, Sorry, he's got to slide out. Sorry, I, I, I'm doing so many things here that I never... Okay, thought. the little little chat has to slide little out. Chat. <laughs> yep, little yep. chat has to pull this out. Is, this is great. I, I don't always get to hang out with people who appreciate canon films, so this is oh, awesome. That was this this is you, like mate. a sport for us. <laughs> Wonderful to have you, mate. Thanks for being here. No, and, uh, thanks, for, thanks for letting me tell come us on. Where, tell us where we can all find you. Um, so I co-host a show on uh, YouTube. It, it, our channel is called the Ascendant Art Podcast. It's with me and Slender Dad. We usually have Brahma or, or Mad from Mad Barber Entertainment hanging out on our shows. Um, I do gamings with Brahma on Tuesday now, along with him, 
Uh, yes, we we've been doing uh, party animals, and it's been pretty fun. If, if as long as Boosh can actually figure out how to not join eighteen times into the <laughs> the stream, <laughs> but so that's a that'll be tomorrow night. Uh, I think we do ten p.m. Eastern because I, I work on Eastern time. So yeah, it's ten p.m. Eastern. Yeah. So thanks for having me. I'll, uh, oh, thanks I'll for being here, mate. Going. And we'll thanks see for, you on Bourbon yeah. and Boarding again yep. on Saturday nights with me oh, and yeah. Drama. There you go. Okay, mate. Thanks, thanks for being here. Take care. Bye. See you tomorrow, bud. All right. So let's, uh, there we go. Unspotlight that. Uh, back to, yeah. So anyway, uh, let's go back to this. I'm trying to find the right layout. I want a better layout than that. There we go. I like that layout. That makes, uh, puts John right in the, under the logo. There we go. No, I've changed. You guys still here? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. So we're at the crossroads. He went down to the crossroads. Uh, yeah, this is. I think somebody said that a lot of this was some of this was filmed in Seattle, but I don't know if that's uh, makes sense. Definitely looks more northern California. Did, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is uh, where they basically he's, they've destroyed a supermarket and the hospital. Now they're going to destroy a small town. <laughs> hey, you know you gotta have those ever escalating. Casualties, yeah. I guess. Yeah. It, um, I think it's, has, um, stank, sorry, not stank, stock turned up yet. Now, this is the one bit that puzzled me about this. So, stock, the corrupt cop and night slasher devotee turns up and they, they just kind of accept her, like, yeah, sure. <laughs> like yeah no no nothing suspicious about any of that you know <laughs> um we'll literally come and stay with us and you know hang out with us and you know even though we don't really know you groovy now they're getting the on the bikes yeah it's extremely well constructed in that way if you think about it it's it's got you know each set sequence plays in a different setting and then takes it up a notch each time yeah visually very identifiable too in that the different uh sections of the movie are very visually different mm. and in the days before cell phones yes still had phone booths what's mm -hmm. up yeah why did they... i remember those i know there's still a few of them around here and there but uh why do they trust this skank or uh, stank uh, woman? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. I never understood that. Maybe they cut something and fellow the, cop is the only thing I can fellow think of. cop is all, but he knows there's a dirty cop, so right, yeah. But I do enjoy that sequence where he's putting together the Giamatti or whatever it's called, um, the Paul Giamatti. The, uh, he's putting this weapon together. He's, he's laying the grenades out just to check that they're still grenades. And I was yes. wrong, by the way. That is not a uh, Scorpion copy. That is an entirely uh, proprietary build by the Finns. Yeah, it's a Finnish weapon, apparently. Cool yeah. guns, killer black metal. Yeah. Yeah. Killer country. There you go. Jatematic. Jatematic. Great hockey players, too. Fantastic hockey players. And last names that sound like they are a disease. <laughs> Stank of him. <laughs> Huck and Pa. She was hot back then, man. I've she really was. Oh, she was. Oof. She's a big girl. I can see what Stallone saw on her. No yeah, doubt. They're all the same height lying down, they used to say. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> That's but I never said that. Other people used to say that. I wouldn't dream of saying something as misogynistic and sexist as that. No. Oh, no, you go worse. As a short guy, you have to. I was fixing to life. say, usually you're standing up. I don't think sheep <laughs> lay down, do they? I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So Here they're the go. only, really, the only lovey dovey bit. It's the uh, my bodyguard scene. Yeah. And, uh, it's Costner and Whitney Houston all over again. It is. <laughs> no, don't. You've just put that freaking song in my head now. Gotcha. Hey, it's a great tune. 
Oh, it's no, a great it's, movie. Oh, I'm sorry. No, a lot of people don't like it. I love that movie. I, hate I think it's that great. I hate that film with a vengeance. I love the scene when uh, her her old bodyguard gets in a pissing match with him in the kitchen. Yeah. And he just whips his ass like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. And then he looks at him and goes, I don't want to have this conversation again. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's freaking awesome. Oh, man. Oh, well, Ooh, we freeze framed that in the wrong place. <laughs> Pretty blurry. <laughs> so, again, they've all got their Christmas gifts with them. It's a Christmas movie. Yes. What more do we have to say? Right. It there Hulk it is. The killer. Yeah. Uh, and now, Get so down. this mo this motel is going to need a little bit of work. Uh, yeah. After, um, Just a little bit. There's the nativity. Yeah. The three wise men got taken out. Is uh, Nick still with us? I don't know. I think he he said he'd be right back. Oh, he said he'd be back. Oh, right, yeah. I just had to run to the bathroom real quick. That's why I took off. You see, this cannon are good at this. Motorcycles flying through doors and windows in yes, buildings. Yes, because you Chuck know. Norris. <laughs> Chuck did it. Oh, man. That wig was really kept on pretty well. I mean, they put a lot of spirit gum on that they wig did. right there. Let me tell you. That is a cannon shot. The motor right. All this is very cannon. You know, yes. Oh, yeah. Explosions everywhere. Non-discriminate. <laughs> we don't even know who threw the grenades here. Motorbikes going flying, off left and through, right. Flying through the air on fire. Hit the pyro. <laughs> Hit the pyro. Anybody know uh, what those bikes are? I don't know what they are. What check they that fool standing up in the back of the truck. I know. I think safety come on man right what a kind of an example is that to say he's taking them out though yeah um oh, motorcycles he, versus a he, let the woman, he, he let the woman drive oh shit rookie mistake you hate rookie to say mistake. It. <laughs> have you well, also well, noticed, have you noticed one in, way to make that worse yeah have you noticed in these movies as well, and Cobra's a great example, there's at least two points where there's just enough of a gap for a vehicle to go through something. And the first they time get it, was, it. it was the, the gas ta the gas tankers. Just mm -hmm. they left just enough of a gap for a vehicle to go through. Everything's on fire, but there's just enough for it to just get. enough. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot the gap. And now they're rushed in here so she can squeeze his lemons. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she did that last night. Okay, so oh man, now yeah. we're getting to the warehouse. Uh, so here's another '80s trope: warehouse, a, a finale the in factory, a, as Razor put it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A finale in a, a furnace pl or a place, or steelworks, or a warehouse, or a factory. It's got to be manufacturing involved right. in some and, way, shape, or form. And lots that. of heat and gas. Yes. Well, when you think about it, <laughs> dangerous a fucking that, place. A lot of manufacturing places had just shut down due to all the over uh, outsourcing. So there was a lot of empty factories lying around to film movies in, yeah. while they were still safe to be in. So I guess this is an appropriate point to pause that and show another one of these great lines and clips. Yes. From this, there's two two sequences. I'll show this one first. to remain silent. He finally uses that match. Finally uses the damn match. And it's, uh, yeah, you have the right to remain silent. It's like the, uh, you have the right to remain dead or whatever it was. In that, that you have the biggest dick. What I did yesterday! Oops. Um, let me just... No! Yes, you did! Oh, dear. Um, sorry about that. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, so the big showdown, uh, hoedown, showdown, always in a place with tons of gas and heat. And you just know that when she's shot, she's going to come back again. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, I love how they're all using like long distance hunting rifles in a factory. <laughs> Longest <laughs> sight line might be like 15 feet. 
I was muted and didn't even know it. Have you guys ever seen a movie called Running Scared with Billy Crystal and Gregory oh, Hines? Yeah. One of my yeah. favorite movies ever. At, at one point in the movie, he's got a gun in, uh, up up in this guy's nose, and, and he's and he's reading him his rights. He goes, "You have your uh, the right to remain dead. You have the right to a coroner of your That's choice." Right. You know? uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then we get this. So he's he's picked off all the bad guys, as you say. They they weren't armed properly for this, but. Uh, and then the climactic fight with one of the great, best, most satisfying deaths in any action movie ever, I think. Yes. I'm very inclined to agree with you on that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Indeed. it's pretty good. What What's fucked up, though, is the bad guy likes it. That's what's fucked up about it, though. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. It is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Hook me. But yeah, I love all this taunt that he's taunting him and trying to get him to, to oh, you're going to have to arrest me. Really? You really think that's going to happen? When you think <laughs> a character like this, you're usually thinking a Hannibal Lecter type, you know, a, a, yeah. a, a scrawny smart dude, right? And this yeah. guy's on roids and things like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, oh, it's scary. I mean, this guy's cool. pretty scary. Why do you think... That Cabretti's going to take him in when he's killed every single other person in his no, crew. You right. won't shoot. Like, did you just see what happened to like your entire cult? Are you paying attention? Like, <laughs> you think you're right? special somehow? <laughs> but it's still a great sequence. I mean, yeah. it, it, uh... he keeps calling him pig. And let me tell you something: uh, being an ex-law enforcement person, that is the last thing that a cop wants to be called. Oh, no. It really yeah. is. Yeah, we uh, say it takes pride, and integrity, and guts to do the job. Whenever yeah. somebody says that to us, but it really pisses us off. You get some hook, yeah. line, and sinker here. Yes, he does. <laughs> so the uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's somebody mentioned Terminator earlier in the chat, and there is some similarities, strong similarities to Terminator in this ending. I mean, it's mm -hmm. so set in the same environment, similar. Get you know, there is some similarities. Yeah, Terminator was of course first, but T two wasn't. T two was after this. I think Terminator. Well, was well first. after. Yeah. Well after. Yeah. T two. Both of those T2. movies ended in a in a manufacturing plant, though. Yeah. Both of them did. So we will play this clip. Hopefully, we'll get it's the last clip we have, and it's of the finale. He's a hunk of hunk of burning love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there was a great line right that one. before the final contact uh, confrontation. Said, this is where the law stops and where I start. I start. Right, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and because then, uh, he's calling him a pig. Poo. That's right. Yeah, but he had the, he's got the rocky uh, punch sound effects. It sounds like he's hitting a board of wood. A plank yeah. Of wood. Yeah, it uh, does. Yeah. yeah. I love those. You don't get that as much now. No. I love those sound effects. No. <laughs> it's great. They really don't make them like they used to in every way, yeah. and that was one of them. And it's all practical effects as well. Yep. Well, there may be some in-camera uh, stuff going on, I don't know, but uh, most of it's practical, I assume, other than some of the flat fire effects, because you can't get that close. But uh, there you go. Uh, and this factory will never be the same again. Found well, they probably shut down after that, bro. Yeah. 
And that's uh, one devastated town. Oh, yeah. There's a whole lot of people outside. Could have helped. Um, you know, that's a lot of cops could have come in there and helped. I don't know. Yeah. He's, <laughs> it's interesting that he did have to abandon his pal, and he doesn't hold yeah. it against him. No. Gummy bears. Clint Eastwood did it to me, and now you've done it. Now you've done it. <laughs> My God. Yeah, this guy's got the worst luck in cop movies, man. He's the, he's the partner mm -hmm. that always gets shot. <laughs> <laughs> the, the second worst luck. The other one would be OJ in the Naked Gun series. Oh God, yeah, uh, yeah. That's she gets dragged under vehicles, screwed up every show, right? So I guess when when um, the the actor uh, auditions, his, his, his agent phones up and says, "I've got a part for you." He goes, "Let me guess." <laughs> I die. I get shot. I'm a cop that dies. <laughs> and my last name is Gonzalez. And the last name is Gonzalez. <laughs> yeah. Rennie Santoni. That's it. Yeah. Then he punches out the uh, he pun punches out Scorpio there, but that was when supposedly Scorpio at the end was meant to be Scorpio. Monte was meant to be revealed as the ultimate leader. Yeah, of the cult. They, they, they thought there was too many levels. I guess just you know, to, it, it lessened the impact of the Night Slasher. Yeah. So okay, does that mean also the poster not only gives away the beginning but the ending because of the motorcycle? Well, you're not yeah. wrong. Yeah. It, it's yeah, a yeah, very yeah. vague spoiler in a in a way. How in many movies in the way. '80s ended with a, a couple on the back of a bike, dude? It how many? A lot. Quite a few. Yeah. A, lot. a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A very eight. We'll just call it, it was a very '80s ending. It was a very yes, it '80s. Was. Ending. It is Astro peak Rui. '80s. This yep. movie. It's brilliant <laughs> for it. It's all. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, and it's brilliant because of that. It's, it sums up 80s action movies so well. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yeah, dear. I didn't know this John Cafferty other than from Eddie and the Cruisers. I mean, yeah. I, did they have hits uh -huh. uh, otherwise? Uh -huh. Joe might know. No, not really. It, they were, it was Eddie and the Cruisers. Right. I, I don't even know that people remember the song from this movie at all. No. It's the Eddie and the Cruisers soundtrack they were best known for. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, look, no cannon logo. Well, yeah, I, I put one on there. Brothers, I wonder what if you can call Max. What a great, great, gr a great, great movie! It is great, a great movie. Uh, yeah, probably one of my favorite 80s action flicks. Oh, yeah, yeah, top five easy. Yeah, it's um, one of the best of the best of the best. I think so. I think it, it, it's it's. It, it, it epitomizes everything about 80s action flicks. And it oh, yeah. still holds up. Some of them don't hold up as well. This one, to me, holds up really well. Yeah, And it epitomizes them in a very in a way that like, it takes itself seriously. It's not one of those later ones that's basically a parody of 80s action movies. Like This was done very intentionally. Yeah, yeah and, and, and in true 80s fashion, the hero was an anti-hero. He was oh, he yeah. was the guy that didn't go with the system. He was always bucking the system. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was the point of a lot of '80s action flicks. Is um, you need those guys too that <laughs> kind of don't do <laughs> do things the normal way. But right. when shit gets really bad, that's when you go to them. Right. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of throwbacks to Dirty Harry. Uh, oh yeah, character, and also the fact that he's called Marion Cobretti is the tribute to John Wayne, and we know mm -hmm. John Wayne. A lot of John Wayne, Wayne movies. He goes out and gets the bad guys on his own. Yeah, in his way. So, yeah. and if I remember right, hadn't he just died when they were filming this? Uh, when did oh, hang on. I'll somebody in the chat might know when ah, John well, Wayne did. I um, remember right. him dying, but because uh... it was about the mid '80s, so it might be about this time. Yeah. So, one thing we talked about on Midnight's Edge after dark recently on the Shitlist show was uh, top five movies that we thought should have had a sequel and never got one. This was my number one. Really. Yeah, I picked this as the number. Now he one. died in 1979, guys. Sorry, second. He didn't make it number to the two. Eight. Number one was Master and Commander. This was number two. Ooh, yeah, oh, God. Oh, that Master movie would have been so bad. One. But yeah, 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 I'd love to have seen more adventures of uh, Marion Cobretti. Yeah, that would have been awesome. I mean, it was a success. It could have been done. Mm -hmm. I know Stallone got busy doing other things and he had to do over the top with Cannon, but. It'd be a simple a formula, just have him protecting another hot chick. It'd be uh, it'd be like a James Bond type of thing, you know. You just have, have him, uh, you know, protecting some 
a hot DA or something like that. You know what yeah, I mean? Same time though, from this point until like the late nineties, this man was in a movie every six months. Yeah, he was. He was killing it. He was knocking it out of the park. Man. I still think he could do one now. I mean, he's not. He could be Cabretti retired from the police at, uh, and doing yeah. private detective work or something or security. The older yeah. guy, like he is, but he I haven't seen it. Tulsa King, but I hear he's knocking it out of the park with that yeah. show. So you know, he could probably do it, but he would. Yeah. He would obviously play him as he is now, an older right. guy. But um, mm -hmm. it could be done. But it was, it's a missed opportunity because it was a big hit. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, although, yeah, Kim, I mean, from what you said, twenty-five million dollars, and it made over a hundred million. I mean, hundred quadrupling the investment. Sixty that's ridiculous. million, and then all the VHS stuff. On top. I mean, this was hundred sixty. That's six times what it cost to make. Huge. Yeah, this VHS. was a massive W for the studio. So, mm -hmm. Canon like didn't said, make any money out of it, though. Warner oh, Brothers yeah. made all the money. <laughs> yeah. Apart from some product placement stuff, that might have gone back to the Google -Go boys, but uh, <laughs> right. Just you know, just put that in an envelope over there, will you? Just you know. It'd be cool. Oh, what are you just saying? Nothing. <laughs> you saw nothing. Uh, hmm. it, it could definitely have had a sequel. It is a, a fantastic movie. I, I love it to death. Stallone is perfect in it. What more can you? Oh, Jack had his sucker. Stallone had his matchstick. His matchstick. Right? Yeah. And he still had a lighter, and it was a laser. I thought he had the lighter on the gun. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they always put on the posters as this little flame. Like, it's yeah, little yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I, I think we're all in agreement. It's a, a beloved movie. Oh, it's yeah. fantastic! Man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, brilliant example of of it's. It may not be strictly speaking a canon, but it's close enough for our yeah. purposes. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we've had a great crowd today, uh, and they're in the chats and the chatteries, both on YouTube and over in Rumble. Quite a few people chatting and uh, watching over there. So hi to all of them. Uh, hi to everybody again that's been here on YouTube. Uh, we really appreciate your uh, your contributions. It's been a lot of fun. There's, we had us laughing at many points. Uh, and we'll look forward to the next Canon Film Club, whenever that may be. I'd like to thank little Chad for coming in earlier. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for being here. Uh, give you all a chance now to do some plugging. So, Pope, would you like to go first? Tell us where I we can I see shall. you. Um, I'm going to be re uh, kind of reviving rock and roll religion over on Rumble, where uh. We're going to do a little bit different format, and we're where you can actually play to... music. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Be able to play <laughs> hey. play. Yeah. And, uh, I think we're going to kick that off with uh, me and my some uh, fellow degenerates on the panel uh, talking about the new Saxon record. So, uh, oh yeah. yeah. And uh, we got a lot of big things coming up on that side of the house. But uh, as for YouTube, I'm putting up a playthrough of Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader with uh, my buddy Trucker Rob. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you guys are into 40k or just want to hear us just say random shit, go over and uh, give that a watch because we have we're having a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, but, thank, uh, you, Matt, thank you, thank you, thanks for coming out. Uh, Canon Films and this one especially are very very close to uh, my heart as being part of my childhood. So. This is uh, absolutely awesome. Oh, it's 40K good, good is going to be good to, uh, to be doing here pretty quick, man, because, you know, mm -hmm. Pavel's working on that project for uh, Amazon. Mm -hmm. yep. Imperatus, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, like everyone has said, this movie is just a stone-cold classic. Can't really argue with Stallone in the mid-'80s at all. Mm -hmm. I don't think he put out much at that time period that was bad. Uh, until you get to over the top, but we won't go there. Oh, um, well, it has its charms. Yeah, <laughs> I love over the top. I love I his got, rig. I got my Lincoln Hawk shirt. <laughs> yeah, I love his rig. Yeah, well, look at that. Cover. I might also have something to do with that. A buddy of mine who was absolutely obsessed with that movie when it came out. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Christian Delorme's favorite slash. I hope. <laughs> I would not be surprised. But I, uh, I do have some stuff coming up. As little Chad said, you can catch me with him tomorrow night on Brahma's channel, gaming with Brahma. That's been a lot of fun. It's been myself, Brahma Bull, Boosh McFadden, Slender Dad, Lil Chad, uh, 
and then Hora Amarada and another guy named Smokey. It's just been nice, nice. stupid fun. It Good really, stuff. really has been. And that's even without Mad being there. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, other than that, uh, I do have stuff planned. Just my work weeks have not been going accordingly. Mm-hmm. To you know, with the weather, and we're supposed to get a nice ice storm here tomorrow, so that's probably going to fuck up my week this week. Have you figured well, out your uh, streaming uh, text? I haven't had a chance time? because I haven't had a chance yet because of work. Whenever you need me, man, let me know. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get in touch with you about that because normally yeah. me and my buddy Toy Gains we're talking about streaming on Wednesday, but if I don't go to work tomorrow, I go in on Wednesday. Right. Well, thank you for being here today, buddy. Always oh, yeah, absolutely, it. man. Thanks. Uh, Joe, you're up next. Where can we find you and where are you up to? Joe's Atmosphere, you know where to find me. Um, the, the schedule's changed a little bit. Uh, we were supposed to do uh, our first uh, Brothers Hack the Matrix this evening, but apparently Mondays don't agree with my brother. So we're going to rethink what night we're going to do it. Uh, may wait till uh, football season's over with and do something on Sunday afternoon, maybe. But uh, yeah, the next time you'll see me is tomorrow night doing uh, Papa Joe Gamer after dark. We're going to get the jiggle physics going and some female wrestling, nice. uh, or Rumble Roses, uh, Double X. Come check nice. it out. We'll have a, look, a good time. Some hot chicks cool. wrestling. What's up? Well, can't argue with that. Oops, sorry. Uh, thanks, Joe, for uh, being here. Appreciate it. Always, mate. always a pleasure. Man. And uh, I prematurely, I, I prematurely put John on the screen, but now it is his turn. Uh, now it's mature. Oh. Well, um, first of all, I'd like to thank the Ice Storm for allowing me to be here today. Uh, <laughs> cool. Because otherwise, I would have been at work, just getting home about thirty minutes ago. <clears throat> but there is a uh, god. There is a god. <laughs> <laughs> and he loves you. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll, uh, next time you'll see me, uh, I'll probably be on Joe's show tomorrow night while, while making fun of him while he tries to play Rumble Roses. Um, <laughs> I say tries. He does a very good job at it. But uh, normally my show's on Wednesday and Friday on Pop Culture Minefield at 8 p.m. So uh, I'm doing on 8, on Wednesdays I do Uncharted and four and on fridays i'm doing uh baldur's gate cool baldur's oh. gate the the game of the year baldur's gate. oh i know i'm playing elden ring now and i think it's pretty good or was that the year before that was the year before that was the oh, year right. before that doesn't count then okay mm-hmm. uh cool thanks for being here john really appreciate it mate go check him out everybody uh and last but not least by no means least it's uh, Lemmy's son, the <laughs> the wonderful Nick Pfizer, my great friend. <laughs> I, so I don't know where blood came from, but it came down my head. I don't know why, but I'll have to take care of that after. Ooh, um, regardless, I okay. guess I, it was the Cobra. Cobra gave me a snake bite. So regardless, regardless, the mark stays on for the stream. Uh, thanks for having me, 70s. Uh, good to hang out with you. Das Wolf and Joe's Atmosphere, Paradise, Pulp, uh, Little Chad earlier as well. Good to hang out with the item chat. Thanks for being here. Good to hang out with all of you tomorrow night. Toxic Today, Rambo, aka Rambo 4, aka John Rambo. It's going to be huge. And of course, Comic Shop Talk Friday night. We're going to have C.S. Johnson on. And I'll probably have a video or two. I'll probably at least one this week as well. And of course, I'm on Comics Division Town Monday and Thursday night and Midnight's Edge After Dark Tuesday and Thursday. One of them being right before Toxic Dude. Like, thanks for having me, 70s. Uh, it's been seriously love talking, Cobra. All right, guys. I do gotta get moving. It's yeah. been, it's started getting really crazy. Thanks for being here, brother. Appreciate but, it. Dude, when you do over the top, I'm gonna come. I'll do un- <laughs> under the bottom. We'll do under the bottom. No, <laughs> just, uh, that sounds delightful. <laughs> that sounds delightful. Take thanks care. for having me, dude. It was an honor and a pleasure. Thanks, guys. See you, buddy. Great to see you, Nick. Be good, see man. You. See ya. Have a good one, bro. Uh, so before, just before I get to what I'm up to, I believe my good buddy, uh, get to the chat here. There he my is. My good buddy Christian has ah. super chat five Canadian dollars. I stand corrected. Second uh, favorite trucker movie. So We're Christian and Christian Delorme and his Vinyl Revival channel where Pope and I and uh, others join him for chats about music. Next one is Rush on January 31st, Rush Part 2. Uh, yep. Over the top is my second favorite trucker movie, 
Big Trouble in Little China is the best. Jack Burton rocks. No, what about Duel? No. What about Spielberg's Duel with Dennis? Uh, Hop uh, what about um, uh, I got a couple for him. What about Sorcerer with uh, Hitcher, Roy with Scheider, uh, Chris Christopherson and Convoy? Come on, bro. There's a lot. <laughs> I know. Of Thank you, Christian. I appreciate that very much. And you must get a video then. Uh, and it, let's let's uh, find a, a suitable selection for you. Take him to Detroit. No, no, not Detroit. No. No, please! Anything with that! No! Not a canon movie, but I still love that clip. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have loved to have been in Detroit yesterday, by the way. I'll bet you would have. What, Dude, they had the yeah. biggest win in their football franchise's history yesterday. Ah, cool. They are on to the it's NFC football. Championship. Yep. Mm -hmm. If it's not got a puck in it, I don't really care. But I know. I'm I know. Kidding. I know this. But uh, but uh, whether you know it or not, there are other sports out there. I know that we love. But, but thanks again to everyone in the chat. Thank you to the mods, D Bud Martin, Davina, uh, Lord Thoth, uh, and anyone else who may have missed that's been modding. But D Bud and Davina have done stalwart work, of course. Um, thanks to them. Thank you to everybody in the chat. You've all been magnificent. You have my gratitude. Uh, you see, I'm not this. the only one, Brian. There's a bunch of people saying "Go Lions" in the chat, bro. Go yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope you all enjoy it. Yeah. yeah I've got do. my best Snowdub T-shirt on, by the way. Uh, Jolly. Nice. Puppet. So shout out to my brother Snowdub and Jolly and all the puppets and uh, Tuck and Roll. Uh, just thought I'd point that out because I wore it especially to show off. So Snowdub. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, yeah. It's cool. That's a yeah. Shirt. There you go. Nice. Check out yeah, Snowdub's channel, it's, it's, everybody. All hail the uh, Cotton Council. <laughs> Cotton Council. It's such good fun. Uh, I will be... That Jack to, McHugh guy. He's kind of a dick. That Jock McHugh, my cousin, <laughs> he's a real dick. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks he's some kind of studly ram on the feet in the field, but... Uh, the sheep. You should hear what the sheep say about him when he's not around. That's for sure. Um, uh, <laughs> so... Tonight, later on, I'll be on Comics Division, Monday Night Meltdown. Tomorrow, uh, Toxic Tuesday on Nick Visor's channel, where we're doing Rambo, which is Rambo 4, but called Rambo, but whatever. Uh, and then I'll be on other shows throughout the week. It's Saturday night, Bourbon and Boarding, Brahma Bull and I, and Little Chad will be on too, talking about hockey and having some convivial drinks and chat uh, late on Saturday night. So check that out. Uh, and then next week, who knows what we're going to do? The idea kicking around is we're back to music. We're going to do it. it's only talk and roll, and it'll be what makes this song heavy. Yes, will be the topic. So everyone that's going to watch, it's only talk and roll. This channel this time next week, we're going to talk about heaviness. So you'll all have your own ideas about that. So bring them to the chat. Definitely uh, will. But these guys above me. Are, are going to think my version of heavy is no, like but, 70s pop or some shit. I'm that's sure. The, that's the, dis the discussion. Yeah. That's the discussion. That's what it's all about. If we all thought the same thing, like air supply, yeah, very heavy. Um, <laughs> you know, the you. Osmonds, crazy horses, that kind of thing. Um, you can hear Imperator is having an aneurysm in the background. <laughs> can you hear an aneurysm? Yes. <laughs> so, till then. Good night, everybody. Stay well, take care, and keep on rocking. Love you all. See you all soon.